Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, I am Pofna and I hope you're all doing very well. This is our match on Gully Wash with my team Fiery Burrito and the other team which I believe is Unknown History but I apologise if I'm wrong on that. So, right now what we're doing is rolling out to mid on Gully Wash. This is quite a popular map for sixes, also quite a popular map in Highlander. So a lot of you, I'm assuming if you're watching these videos, do know the map. But then again, some of you may not, so I'll try and explain it. Basically, you have a symmetrical map. That's obviously a spy, I'm calling it out. Um, you have a symmetrical map. Where you'll see every little stage, but it's all symmetrical, so both teams have a fair advantage. It just depends on what you want to do on your rollout. You can roll out and be really aggressive and start getting in their face, or you can be sort of defensive and wait for them all to go for the point and then you can push them back off. It just all depends on what your playstyle is. Now right now you see I'm healing Rob Rob as a demo. Now that isn't Jub Jub, just to clarify. That that is another player. So we ha again we've got different players on our team because others keep leaving but what can you do? Alchemist isn't soldier, D's soldier and Alchemist is the scout because our scout was having some internet trouble. So unfortunately we have had quite a lot of team changes this year, but at least we're getting teams out to play. And we're having fun doing it, everyone enjoys playing the classes they play, otherwise, you know, what's the point in doing it? But at the moment we're just being very defensive, because we've capped the first point, but they've got quite a big presence and we've lost a couple of players. So what we're doing, we're holding the mid, and we're going to try and get an uber, and then push them off their second point, unless we get some key picks. There, the reason I backed up into that spy is because I knew it was decloaking, de sorry, and that gives you possibly one, one and a half seconds for him to actually get, get a knife and swing. So I was okay there, but as you saw, as soon as I waited about a second, I did turn around and look at him again. Here, as you see, <laughs> I didn't want to let Grey Barn die. It was probably a bad time to push because we were all starting to retreat, but I didn't want to let Grey Barn die because obviously he was quite a big factor in our defence as well as our offence. So I, I had to let him live. So we we actually managed to get something off of that push because they didn't have Uber. But as you can see, they're all, they're all um, pushing back out, sorry. Still on with that horrible cold. Uh, they uh, managed to get something out of that push to sort of push us back out. So now we've got to play defensive again, and it's going to be a bit of ping pong here at the moment. So we're going to start trading there. That's not, again the spy, because obviously I'm healing tryhard. You can tell which one the other spy is. So we're trying to play aggressive, just by getting some picks. I mean, Rob 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 is flanking the other side. We're trying to get Ludor around the other side. Tryhard's watching the other side. So we are trying to get some some pick which will allow us to push him a bit quicker. But unfortunately this is kinda of, can be how it goes in Highlander sometimes. Is you're trying to get the push in, but if it's not working, you have to wait. Here, Grey Barn died. And luckily there was a dummy man above the door. Here I was actually picking my head, because I was just seeing what we could push in against. Because the demo man went away went away from above the door. So I was wondering if I could just take Sama and D in, and I could, so you might as well use it. I like using my Uberzilli because, you know, if I haven't explained it already, I think I have, but it's like having a star player, an Uber charge, or a crit screen, or a quick fix. Now, if he's your star player, what is the point of having it if you're not going to use it? I mean, obviously that can be different in some situations, like for example, uh, if you're waiting to counter. If, for example, if they push in and you, you're with a pyro and you're going for a counter, you know, then that's a good time to hold the uber. But usually, if, if you've got an uber, they haven't got an uber, what is the point in holding it, sort of thing? I mean, yes, you can be waiting for other people to get up, but if you use it, you've got invulnerability, they haven't, and that's your star player and they're not using theirs, sort of thing. So, that's a little bit of methodology behind it. Sorry, they have a bit, bit of lag. That is an FPS lag, that is just me lagging through some crummy internet connections. Here, what we're doing, we're trying to work out a flank. We knew there were stickies on the other side of the door. It's quite a popular place to do it. 
So we're trying to work out what to do. We know they're not going to push out yet because they haven't got a new charge. So what we're trying to think is we're going we're to get D going up top. I think Alchemist is up top as well. And then me and Grey Barm and Sam are all going to flank through the left door here now. And we're going to wrap around and still go through the centre, but we're going to wrap. And here we see they've used their Ubershard, so what we're going to do, we're going to ignore it and have a couple of people on the point. Just to say, look, we're still there. And then we're going to go straight for their last. Because now they've got everyone that we're trying to back cap them now, technically. So the reason we I like having Pyro on last point is because he can do that and air blast them all the way. So that was actually worked really well. Because they pushed out the door, which they thought we wouldn't go through, which was true. We didn't want to go through there. So we went around the other door. Here I try and heal up D, Alchemist, and Rob as much as possible. But this, because they can get the rollouts, but it just isn't working really. I mean, I try and get them here, I get them a bit. But it is quite a complicated map because everyone wants to go through different ways. There's uh, three different flank routes at the start and go through. So obviously there's many, many be at one. But here I see a sniper dot, so I just try and hide. Also in that first match, I didn't actually die once. That's not me bragging. That is me giving a little shout out to my team, saying thank you, because when you're a medic, no, if you don't die, you know your team's done a good job. So thank you, team. Also, I popped up my head up there. That is because Ludor managed to get the sniper, so it is safe for me to, to move. Here I have my big judge. I think we're looking for a push, but I'm not sure if we do in the end. Yeah, we are, because um, we have a call. Enough people are up. No, we're just I'm buffing everyone up. I think we're looking to push in. Oh, we were looking to push in. We're not anymore. Because people didn't get here quick enough. If, if someone calls, um, you know, we have to go in, you have to go in. You can't just wait. You can't take your time slowly walking up going, Yep, I'm coming, guys. I'm coming. I want to be a part of it. You have to get in. But luckily, everyone is here. And here we have a pause. This is because our sniper, Tryhard, and our pyro, Sama, both dropped at the same time. Which, you know, isn't isn't convenient. But we asked for a pause, and they were kind enough to give us a pause. We had to ask them a couple of times, but it got there in the end. As you can also see, we're all wearing a nice nice gibbous. That's because in this match we are Team Gibbous. I think there is actually a Team Gibbous, but we're hopefully it's not copyrighted, but we all thought we'd have some fun wearing Team Gibbous. Next match we're doing uh, a different hat style, so if you stick around you'll be able to see our new hat styles. But this is quite a long pause, because, but they were kind enough to give us the extra extended time on the pause, because obviously we did lose two players. But there you go, it happens, these things. While we wait, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, just to pass the time, you know, you can always pause it and <laughs> fast forward a little bit if you don't want to listen. But um, at work, we have a few guys who like playing golf in our office. And they, they've been buying some new golf clubs recently, ready for the new summer season. Obviously that's sl slowly ending now, but they they want some new clubs in. And they, they obviously left an old, one old one in the office by accident. So we thought what we'd do is create like a little mini golf course around our office. It's only like a small office, so we have, at the moment we have four holes in our office. So you get one point for the first hole, two points for the middle two, and then three points for the last hole. And then we have a playoff, which is basically the same version as, I think it's curling. So where you putt it, and the closest one to the marker wins. Anyway, we were doing a, this golf, we do it at lunchtime, just because it passes the time. We're allowed to do it, we had permission. But the first couple of days we were doing it, we had sort of, we were like overextended by lunch a little bit. Just because, you know, you, you sometimes miss time when you're just doing some different things. But anyway, we were there, we were putting away, and then this guy, just, it's your turn, like, you go putt it. And then the MD and the company walks in, and we're all sort of watching, our backs are turned to the entrance, and he just goes, busy boys! And we were all thinking, oh, fuck, you know, we got to all get back to work now. So, we all sort of slowly heads in shame, and this guy just stood there with the golf club in hand, and without any hesitation, he just looked up and went, shh, 
there's a lot of money involved in this. <laughs> and we all just sort of turned back around and thought, oh my god, what have you done? <laughs> and then the IMD luckily just laughed. And he goes, ah, oh, just give me 10% of your winnings. And then, quick as a flash, this guy goes, no, I'm not giving you any of my winnings. But if you're my caddy, I'll give you 15%. <laughs> and then, ah, oh, that was so good. So yeah, if you ever play golf in your office, that is how to get out of it. Luckily, our MD saw the funny side of it. But hopefully, this should just be coming out of the pause now. It, I think, or is this? No, maybe this is the part where everyone done crafting. Everyone done some crafting just to, just to feel apart. Yeah, here we go. So I'm just back in now. I think we're restarting in about 15 seconds because we actually got them in the server and as soon as they got on the team we started again obviously they have to spawn but we because they we, they waited sort of over the limit anyway as I believe there's a limit on the time you can actually wait like they were kind enough to actually go over that limit if if I'm right on that if there's no limit then obviously they just did it for five but here we go five seconds That's me just uh, thanking them for the wait. See whatever. But here we, ha we have seven players. So this, at the moment, is the time where I sort of go against what I was saying. Or not go against what I'm saying. This is one of the exceptions to where you, if you have an Uber and you don't push in. Here we had to push in because they used theirs. And we were trying to hold. So our strategy was we got seven players in the server. Let's just hold. Yeah, we so we're trying to put out as much damage as possible. Here I try and get away, but just heal people up on my way out. But I think I get hit. Yeah. Scout. I don't know where he came from. He must have killed around. Because as you saw, I looked behind me. So he must have killed around the building. Yeah. Oh, no. It's showing the party hat. Damn it. You've ruined, it's ruined the next surprise. This is... Oh, it's showing a new... Showing the new loadout I'm wearing, which is the party hat. So you can obviously tell what we wore in our next matches. That ruined that would be. I didn't realise about that, sorry, if you were waiting for the surprise. Here we actually switch up Critch Creek. Now on Critch Creek I, I wanted to change it because I they had a medic up, so I wanted to try and catch them up an Uber advantage. Now I could have built it build it. I could have built with a demo man or a soldier or or a scout. But you know, this it's a bit quicker to get a Crits Krieg than building. Plus, with the Crits Krieg, I was hoping we could get it before they got their Uber and try and wipe them, but obviously that didn't work. So what we're going to do is now I've seen the pop, I'm going to wait for some players to get up. I'm going to try and get out first. <coughs> Excuse me. Wait for some players to get up and then counter them and try and wipe them, but obviously that didn't work because the scout's in again. And here we're all saying scouts on under point, scouts under point. So we're hoping someone can get up and just make sure he didn't come in like that. So he can try and back cap, but well not back cap, he's gonna try and fast cap. But they've got quite a big big force on the on the on the last point at the moment. So, so we're trying to hold at the moment. Here I go back to Uber because I think it's a better way of pushing out. As you can also see I've named both my medi guns the same. I'm not sure whether this applies anymore, but it used to be where you could only see the first line when you're a spy. Because obviously spies can check which medigun the opponent's medic is using. And it used to be they could only see sort of the name of the gun. So if it's a medigun, you see it's obviously a medigun. If it's a crit screen, it's a crit screen. But I changed them both because obviously, you know, if they're both the same, they don't know what I'm using at any one moment. So in the match I could switch to the other one and they'd still think I'm on the same one. So that was my think thinking behind it. I've seen a couple of other people do it as well. But I don't know if that applies anymore. If someone could put it in the comments that would be brilliant. I, I'm i pretty sure it doesn't apply anymore but if someone could confirm. So but I, I like keeping them the same for old times sake. Here I have an Uber. I see they've popped. So we're going to counter them. I wait as long as possible to counter so we can have a full uber and then just do as much damage as possible. So now I'm going to buff everyone up and we're going to go push out because their heavies down, their medics down, I think their soldier went down in there, you know, uh, Ludor 
told us he's sapping because they had a level 3 up. Which is quite a clever idea, really. If you have a level 3 in the, a defensive position, it can be really hard to push against. So, you know, we're we're all pushing out now. We have lost a couple of players, but we're pushing them out. We don't want to rely on defending that last point. Because we are winning 1-0 at this point. But we're going to push out and we're going to try and hold here and push on for that other win. Which would make it 2-0, which would make it a lot, lot better for us. At this moment, we're just we're just flanking really. Here, I was going around with Sama and D, seeing if we could flank that way. We saw a heavy enemies, so we thought, nope, not a chance. So, I was hoping that was Rob. <laughs> I was so worried in the match. I'm so worried in the match when someone, no one calls out, "Is that a spy? Please say you're not a spy." And I'm just going, no, no, I'm not a spy. Like, As you can tell, I am learning. I haven't been backstabbed yet in this match, so it is going okay. And I don't think I've healed spies either. Well, not knowingly, so hopefully I'm getting better. Hopefully you guys think I'm getting better. There you go, there's the spy. I was calling that out. Oh, no. Jinxed it, didn't I? There we go, there's our spy. But at least I got the assist, you know? Got to be a part of it. Here, we wanted to push in. And Greybarm says there's level 3, and I said, what? But I didn't realise they had level 3 on here. I thought they'd only be using level 3 for that, but nope, they're using it for that as well. Here I try and get out. Grey Barm's very kind and a good heavy, and he allows me to get out. If I say I'm right, I'm getting out. He'll give me enough time to get out. If there's everything around me, if, if he can get out, he'll get out with me, obviously. But he's very kind and he, he'll let he'll put out his life sort of to help me. Here we were all like, "Go Alchemist, woo!" Because he's on six health. We didn't realise he'd live for quite so long, but we were. I turned into like a little. Fangirl, I had my little cheerleader pom poms out. I was just about getting on the dress, but then he died. But we had so much hope. Here we just try and hold our lobby if we can. And if we can push out, which we can, because obviously Rob Roll called it out. Because if we hold right back at last, we think they're going to cap. Or if we hold in lobby, it gives us like a little screen. As you saw, that door revolves. Or revolves it um, slides so we were hoping we could stand behind it if we had to hold that far back here they pop people which we can't really do much about so I try and get out but I see the sniper I see the smy and I smy? I see the spy and I sort of get cornered there's not much you can do in that situation you just have to either heal up as many people as you can before you die or just attempt to get out there I attempted to get out because there was only two more people on the point so in that situation, if I got out and wait for it from the spawn, I could give more. Here, we can't do anything about it. They just got underneath quicker. We were all down. They got the win. So that was a good game there. So it's 1 1 at the moment. It is first of five on uh, capture points. Five CP maps. In Highlander, that is. On lobbies, I think it's. I think it is also first of five, but you only play one half. So at the moment, we're pushing out. We're going the same way. In reflection, I think it probably would have been better to roll out left side rather than right side. Because obviously we've done it now three times and they're sort of catching on to it. As you see, their sniper's waiting. So here I just try and heal people up. I'm trying to hide in the corner. But they're heavy and medic comes along so we have we have to get out really. So they, they have to jump on us. If they started firing first. Basically, if a heavy starts firing at another heavy, the one that started shooting first will win. If they're that close, it's because it, it's just impossible to sort of win unless they slip their hand and they miss aim. But basically, rule of thumb: if one heavy starts shooting first, the other one he's going to win. From that close, that is. If he starts spraying from long distance, no, because you can heal him up as quick as he's dying. Here, scouts on me. Luckily, he backs off. But here we've sort of rotated. They've gone to the right side. We've gone to the left. So. We're just trying to capture the point at the minute and try and put pressure on them to make them come out. Because we've got more people in the mid area than they have. So we're trying to make enough presence to make them think we have to come out and contest this. But obviously they didn't go for it, which is clever by them. Well done. So here we've got the Uber Charge. We're going to push our advantage. Or try and push our advantage. Yeah, we are going to push our advantage. 
I'm just standing back, so I don't want to take a lot of damage. I said to Grave Bomb here, I, I'm not going to let you die. But I think we all fell back a bit and waited for a couple more people. Because they did have a lot on that point. And they were starting to spam as well. Oh, excuse me, it's cold. Anyway, I hope you're all enjoying these videos. I'm, I'm enjoying them. I'm, I'm enjoying watching them back. It helps you learn. I'm also enjoying commentating them for you lovely people out there. You know? <coughs> Excuse me. That wasn't a that wasn't a cough. Just a sort of you know at the end of the sentence you just go <coughs> loser. <coughs> but no, it it was just a general cough. And I do like making these videos for you guys. So here we counter Uber again. I Uber the pyro because he can push them all back. And don't be afraid to Uber your pyro. I know I say it a lot, but don't be afraid to Uber your pyro. It he can be an extraordinarily good. Uber. He can run in, air blast everyone back. Close range, flame flamethrower, or in this case a degrees is insane damage. Then you can puff him in the air, use a flare gun for crit damage, which does 90. Or you can do an axe extinguisher, which is 126, I believe. Now that's brilliant damage. You can kill heavies in seconds, which is technically the most health class. Obviously in some situation it changes depending on your damage output. But if you can take down the heavy, that's quite a big part of the team they've lost. So here, we're, we're almost on Uber. We're just all getting ready to push in. I like to push in normally on 95%. Sometimes that can go against you. So you have to think of the situation. Because, for example, if you push in with 95% straight away and you get sniped at 96%, there's no point. So you've got to know who's up and whether you can push in with 95%. If you can push in with 95%, do it. Because then that gives you about 5 seconds before you have the problem. Five seconds. That gives you five percent before you pop it, or can pop it. Here, I sort of risk my life because I know I'm not going to get out. So I just put out as much damage and hopefully we can catch the point. And we do. This is good. Go alchemist. So we do cap the point there. So I, we were just putting time on the point and putting out as much damage as possible because we knew some people were still alive. So we're currently two rounds to one to us. I tried to roll out with Frob there, but he managed to jump out too quick. It's a bit unfortunate we've had so many team changes. I don't think we've had the same team one week running yet, but hopefully we can become more consistent whether it be the end of this season or next season. Because it is good fun playing. You know, wh whichever team you're against or playing with, it is good fun playing. Here I see that sniper, but I'm just trying to juggle it and then I, I decide to get out a little bit because obviously there's sniper. And I go back up and he's still watching. The heavy's there now. So I'm trying to sort of get out and hold at the same time. I know there's something behind me, so I can't go that way. There, there's a soldier that was behind me. So I just try and surf a rocket, but it didn't work. There, I honestly thought that was very hard. But that was a bit stupid there. So, what can you do, really? Oh, at some, some points this minute, you just have to stand back and go, would you look at that? You can't do anything about it. You just have to stand back and go, oh well. We'll come back on the next life, we'll do better. This is what I like doing with uh, soldiers and demos on the way up. Sometimes you build, which gives you a little bit of an uber advantage. It's always good to build because it can get you up to uber quicker. Sometimes, you know, if you don't build, you can lack on the uber charge if there's not enough people around you to heal. So if there's no one around you that needs heals, <coughs> then obviously try and build a little bit because it will get you up to uber. Here I'm trying to heal as many people as I can at once so they can all run off. And obviously some people in chat get annoyed. <coughs> Hopefully they'll see the side of it from this POV. If, if everyone calls for heals at the same time, or everyone wants to get heals to run off at the same time, over heals, you know, and then there's one person in the corner going, oh, come on, heal me, heal me, and then I only heal them to 120. The reason I only heal them to 120 is I try and get everyone to about three quarters health. If I'm doing that strategy, I try and get everyone to three quarters health. Because if everyone's at three quarters health, it's better than having one person at, say, 300 health, and another person at 20 health, than having, you know, one, then bo both around 150 health. Because in that case, you have two people that are still alive, and two people which can spam. Here, Raybarn, I I thought he was running away, so I thought he was going to die, but he didn't. He managed to kill the heavy, so I apologise, Raybarn, for leaving you, but he did go. He went down there, so I'm sorry, Raybarn. Please love me again. So here we're back holding last, which seems to be a thing in this last match. 
So we're trying something a little different. Tesla is a very eccentric engineer, which is good. You always want an eccentric engineer. So here we're going to try a little rollout right. Or Grey Bomb's going to go right and try to see what he can push up. Because he's the heaviest class. He has the most health, put out the most damage. But, uh, well, in a short space of time, close range he can put out the most damage. Obviously, it's debatable at long range and also medium range. But the close, close range, he can put out the most damage quickest. So he's going to flank and see if he can push out that way. I'm gonna, I wanted to push out a bit with Rob here, because he obviously he needs to spam onto the high ground. But it didn't work, because obviously we knew they were all in there. Here, we have an 85%. So this is at 85%. That is like my best way to phrase it would probably be a uh, warning if that is the correct word if it's not I apologize where at 85% I get everyone together and say right we're going this way we're going to do it like this and we're all going to do it together sort of thing so here I try and get out but there was nowhere else to go I died I could have gone the other way but he would have, he would have had longer to shoot at me Sorry, just taking the drink there. It's cold, it's horrible. It feels like your chest is sort of enclosing on itself and your throat just sort of gets really dry at times. But it's okay, I'll live. Hopefully I'll live. <laughs> Here, as you can see, we're building again. With our Mr. the Boston Basher. I am trying to heal people around, so it can be quite hard. Obviously, you have to have extreme communication to do this, but luckily Alchemist is a clever player. And he knows when to sort of stop building. When I stop healing him, he can stop swinging his club. So we're building to try and get an advantage. But mostly it is the same. You know, we're all stuck on last. We're waiting for something to push out. If, it, if situations do come the same in this match, I'll try and, you know, stop talking for you. Because I'm sure my voice is starting to annoy some of you now. But I'll stop talking at points so you can just admire the POV. Or criticise the POV. <laughs> so now we have Uber. The reason we're not using this advantage is because we know they have Uber. Their medic hasn't dropped in a while. No, he hasn't gone down. We know he's around. So we, we get a call here, they've gone underneath. So what we're doing is flanking. This is a very good thing to do if you have Uber and they've sort of used theirs. Or it's a good time to do anyway. But if you. If you're a heavy medic, here we can't because I didn't want Grave Arms to die on such an important thing. Here we try and get back on the point, and there's that pyro tactic again. Pyro comes in, air blast, everyone back off the point. And that's how to get the last point, really. But it was always good to flank as an Uber. If you, if their Uber comes in and they expect to counter Uber, and for some reason you're not there, the reason being you're not there is because you've gone around the back of them. Here I try and switch up a bit. But I lose everyone, so this is bad. I've I've had probably five seconds where I've not actually healed anyone, so that's five seconds of wasted Uber. And here's what I mean in reflection: I probably would have mixed it up a bit. They've caught on to what we're doing. No, they're not a stupid team. They know they know what's going on, and they've caught on to what we're doing. And now they're stopping what we did best. We did best at getting up there and driving them off midpoint quite quickly. Now they've sort of counted that. So here I saw the sniper. So I was trying to wait, thinking, uh, he'll go away, he'll go away, and I'm moving around the corner, body shot. So that's a bit unfortunate, but... But, as I was saying, they countered what we, we were doing best in the midpoint. And that's, that's how to count the strategies, really. You, know, we ha you have to mix it up, or else they're just going to do that each time, and it's going to ruin it. Here I go back on Crit's Creek, because, as discussed before, you know, their medic is still up. So... We know they're going to have Uber a bit this time. Uber quicker. Here I try and heal Rob, but he goes off. I don't know why he's going off. I think he's... He's panicked a bit by the damage, but... Either way, we get to him, I get to him in the end, but... I try and keep him alive here, because it's nice to have a dead man alive when you have a Crit's Creek. So here we're backing right up now, because it's just the two of us up there. Defend 
So as as discussed before, if I didn't finish my sentence, I'm sure I didn't. That you know, Crit Squeak, we're they they haven't they well they're gonna have Uber quicker than we have it, so we're gonna hopefully get the Crit Squeak. As they use their Uber, we're gonna keep everyone alive, and then we're gonna counter Bob. There, that's a bit unfortunate. You open the gate. You always have to know what's on the other side of the gate. Here, I try and get away from the scout, but I can't get him off quick enough, and I drop a Crit's Creek. Which isn't as bad as dropping an Uber, but it's still bad. But luckily, I think that was the only one this match. I think. But the reason I didn't pop there was because, um, one, it wouldn't have really saved me if I stayed in. It might have saved me if I stayed in, but I was pretty sure at that point it wasn't. Because they were also pushing through the main gate. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, I, I would have popped and put out damage, but it's not the real map where the other classes can literally go straight in. So at the moment, all we're doing is holding. We're trying not to lose at this point. Because it is very close to the end of the map, and it's 2 or So... We're all pushed back. We're going to try and push out if possible. Here I get sniped. I didn't realise that sniper was there, but later in the match, I uh, don't go that side much anymore. I try and stay on the left. I learned from my mistakes. Which is what you've got to do in the matches, you can't keep doing the same things you were doing. Otherwise, it just you know they catch on to it. They'll take you out. So at the moment, as I was saying, you just have to hold on. We're pretty sure we can't move out. We're going to try, but we're pretty sure we can't move out and capture all five points. So what we're doing is holding, and if we can, capture a couple of points to make it safer for us to hold. As you can see, I'm now on the left side, because I got sniped, I said I don't want to be on the right side anymore. No, it's too big a sniper gap. I mean, yes, the sniper can be on the right, straight ahead where I'm looking now, but it's not necessary, really. Because we'll know if he goes over on the right. And it also is a bit close for him there. If he goes there, chance that he's going to die. I'm trying to heal everyone here up here, but I sort of get a bit confused because there's a few calls out at once, and there's people that spawn calling, "Can I have heals?" And I sort of got a bit confused where to go. Here, I <laughs> I decide I'm going to go out the other side, but off there, Uber's there. I'm saying keep him off the point as long as possible, but at this point, you just have to. I have to go in. Because there, they capture the point. So now it's 3 2 to them, which is a bit unfortunate because it is very close to the half half hour mark, which is the half time point of the matches. It's either first or five. I mean, it's, if you get four caps in one five CP map, so if you win four times, it goes to a half time if that's before a 30 minute mark, or it's a 30 minute mark, and then you have another 30 minutes to decide who wins. So first to five that self. If it's a draw after that, here we knew they were coming up this way, but we still rolled out this way. And we thought they'd come out this way, so we'd try and roll out. But so we could work them off because we had the pyro there this time. I was gonna buff them up, we're gonna push them back, but unfortunately they didn't roll out that way, they just sent the soldier, which was clever of them again, they're mixing it up. Which in reflection we probably should have done on the last round and possibly even this round. Just keep them guessing like which way they're gonna go. Sort of like if you play a sport, for example, if there, there's the halftime, but I'll, I'll continue this story next time, but thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next round.